You know, I'm uh, thinking of writing a book called How to Be Happy in the Australian Outback with a Broken Feed Pipe. You may think because I've run into trouble, I've run out of ideas. You're wrong, I haven't. I have a number of avenues open to me. I can either stop a passing kangaroo and hop a lift, or I can send the kangaroo off to take a welding course and come back in three months. Or I can uh, see if there's anybody around here which I should have thought of in the first place. Kinsall Mining Company. Danger, keep out private. This means you. Yes, sir, Australia's a big country, matched in size only by the greatness of its people's hearts. They're large and friendly. Anybody around? Anybody around? Hey, get up. And go and put your hands up, too. See what I mean? Large and friendly. If, what did you say? I said friendly. Why should I be friendly to someone trespassing on my property? Now, who are you? The name is Templar. Never heard of you. Simon Templar. <laughs> You know you're not going to shoot me, so why not put that thing yeah. down? Huh? Come on, come on, empty it, empty it. Didn't you see my sign? It says keep out. Of course I saw your sign, I can read. Yes, when my sign says keep out, it means just that. I don't want no one snooping around here, you understand? But will you stop poking me with that thing? I'm not snooping around. This is a mine, friend, not a flaming highway. It's private property. The fact is my land rope was broken down. I've got a broken feed pipe now. If you've got a small piece of tubing, I'll try and get it fixed and I'll be on my way. You sure you're not working for Grove? Grove, who's Grove? Grove's a squirt who wants my mind. He ain't gonna get it. It's my strike. There's gonna be any millionaires around here. It's gonna be me. Well, now, you look here, Mr. Uh... Kinsel. Kinsel of the Kinsel Mining Company. I'm the president. Well, Mr. President? There, there's Linda. There's Linda. This is Paul. Yes, trespassers. Is that what you got the rifle out for? Yeah, what if no one's trying to pinch my mind? Yeah, well, you just put it away before you hurt yourself. Right? Yeah, but Lindy... You in trouble, mister? Well, I have a little problem with my car. I was hoping to get some help. Oh, I'd be glad to tell you to Stony Creek. It's not far. Well, that's very kind of you. Get a rope out of the back if you pull in front. All right. Oh, you too, Pop. It's time for lunch. I've made me time. Yeah, spent a lot of money, two fortunes, just blew them both. But this mine, this mine's one that's gonna be the daddy of them all. Oh, congratulations. This mine is gonna make my two sons the proudest boys in the Commonwealth. They're gonna be proud of me. Real proud. Tell me about the girl. Yeah, Lindy? Yeah, Anderson. Lindy Anderson. You, you call her Lindy. Everybody else does, yeah. She's the finest bush nurse I ever seen in my life. She's a beauty. Yep. Yeah, she makes her a lovely wife. Kind of girl I wish my boys had married. Oh, you don't like their wives? Oh, they're a bit of cows. Oh, of course, the boys ain't angels either, you know. Fight with themselves all day and every day. Yeah, they do very well down in Sydney, you know. Yeah, property business. Yeah, they've got their own companies. Yeah, they're rich. Yes. Yeah, the boys are going to back me with a mine. Oh, you need capital? Sure, I ain't a flaming millionaire right this very minute, you know. See you later, Mr. Templer, when I've uh, put the car away and had a shower. All right, thank you very much, Miss. Uh... Just call me Linda. Bye. Hey, come on out and taste that cold beer. Hello, give you a hand with that. Yeah. You got in here. It's heavy. Yeah, I ought to be. Them's my ore samples. Hey, that's silver. Oh, good day, 
beers. Hiya, Bob. G'day, Charlie. Two big beers for two big men, Charlie. Hello, Bob. The only big thing about you, old man, is your head. Uh, you put a flame in anything, Grub. Hey, Charlie, I didn't know you was letting cheap crooks and no hopers in here now. Are you calling me a crooky old coot? Well, ain't you? Hey, come on, Charlie, hurry up with them beers. He's spoiling me zest. You know, one of these days I'm going to tear that old snake apart. No, you won't. Not in my place. Thanks. Cheers, Bob. Cheers, all of us. I'm Charlie O'Shea. I own this dump. Well, Simon Templer, how do you do? <laughs> how do you do? Lordy da <laughs> You out here, Mr. Templer? Yes, first time. Ah, ah just like mother's milk. <laughs> yeah, he's Land Rover broke down. Hey, hey, Joe, hey, come here. Here's Joe Casey. G'day, Bob. Hey, Joe Casey, fix anything in town except his wedding date to Linda. <laughs> Here's Simon Templer. How do you do, Mr. Templer? How do you do? The fact of the matter is, I've got a broken feed pipe on my Land Rover. I'd be much obliged if you could fix it. Sure, consider it done. Yeah, he, he pulled up in the mine. Hey, oh, I nearly shot him. Hey, I thought it was grow for a minute. Get out, you old windbag. You know as much about shooting as you do about mining, which is nothing. Ah, oh, shut up, will you grow? Hey, I forgot more about both new level, though. Huh. In your dreams. Silver, <laughs> that pity of yours has never shown a penny weight. Ah, uh, no. Are oh, you now headed old goat? I reckon I've got to teach you a lesson. Knock it off. You speaking to me? Yes, I usually look at people I'm speaking to. I'm also telling you to pick on someone of your own age and size. Like you, maybe? Why not? <laughs> hey, fellas! Mr. Lardy Da here reckons he can fight. Well, well. Sorry, Pop, but I'm afraid he'll live. Hey, what do you know? He ain't even a nutty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, the beers are on me. Ah, the beers, Mr. Uh, Templer, are on the house. Hey, uh, Here you are. You see it right there. You see that vein? That's silver. Yep. I reckon that'll crush maybe, oh, 100 ounces a ton. What does that mean? 100 ounces of silver to every ton of ore? Yep, to really get it. Pop, don't you think it might be a good idea to have an assay done? Assay? Pay some snotty nose carrier to come from Clon Curry to tell me what me oral crash? Yeah, not in your sweet life. I don't need no flaming assay to tell me about all. Sire me, boy, I'm gonna make myself a million. Easy. You wouldn't know what to do with it, Pop. Oh, wouldn't I now? Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. I'm gonna build you the best bush hospital you ever set eyes on. Yeah, uh, oxygen tents, uh, operating theaters, the lot. That's great, Pop. <laughs> hey, what's time? 4.30? Oh, cool. I gotta phone my boys before they leave their offices. You see, Simon, I got a 3,000 quid payment to make me Monday noon. 3,000 quid? What for? Yeah, me lease on the mining property. <laughs> oh, don't look so worried. My boys are gonna finance me. Wally and Willie won't let me down. No, I'm sure they won't, Pop. 3,000 quid is just nothing. They're flaming stinking with money. They're pretty stinking without it, too. Really? I'm afraid they're pretty bad. Ah, uh -huh, and what for? Well, he made all his money in property and Pop just never hears from them. Now, he's let things drop from time to time, but he hasn't even seen them in 15 years. They're so mean, they fight something awful. We figure it this way, Mr. Templer. Cain and Abel were bosom buddies compared to Willie and Wally Kinsel. <laughs> Now listen, Wally, you listen. You double cross me once more and I'll cut your frame and judge. Let me explain, will you? Explain what? That you went to Harrison behind my back and crewed my deal with him? How can you explain that? If it's a fight you're after, okay. If it's the truth you want, calm down and listen. Truth! 
You wouldn't know the truth if it sat up and bit you. You've been creeping up behind me all your life, like you hit me with that rock when I was five years old. Now shut up and listen! Go on. Well, Harrison telephoned me Mr. yesterday. Pencil. Can't you see we're busy? I'm sorry, it's your father. What about him? It's a personal call for you, Mr. Willie, from Stony Creek, Queensland. Well, tell him I'm out. Or dead. He says it's terribly urgent. He wants to see you. Well, tell him to come to Sydney. Yeah, next year. Are you sure it wouldn't be better, Mr. Willie, if... You heard what my brother said. We don't want to talk to him. What do you reckon he wants? Money? What else? We better look somewhere else. I'm not pouring any more cash down that scrawny old gutter. Now, about that Harrison deal. Leave me alone. Lay more. Listen, I'll figure on my... I'm, I'm, you I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Kimson, but your son's in an important conference and can't be disturbed. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Uh, well, well, tell Willie to hurry up, will you, miss? This call's cost me money. Uh, hello, Willie boy. Uh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks, Hank. Yes. Uh, now, look, Willie, about this mine. I need 3,000 quid by Monday noon. Yes. Uh, you will? Oh, Willie, that's great, son. Uh, I knew I could count on you, Willie boy. Sorry, Mary, he's not here. Yeah. Oh, bye. Do you like a shot of whiskey, Pop? You wouldn't even talk to me. Sorry, Pop. You won't tell nobody. No, of course not. I'm an old fool. Hello, love. Yeah, hey, what's up with you? You won the lottery or something? No. Nope. Well, I got the goods on Willie today. That Harrison deal. <laughs> I'm gonna fix him good this time. What else is new? You and Willie have been fixing each other for years. Well, you wait till he hears what Harrison has to say to him in the morning. Oh, honestly, Wally, why don't you and Willie cut it out? It's so boring. <laughs> Oh, by the way, it was a long-distance call for you this afternoon. Yeah? Who? Well, I don't know. It was for you personally. Some place called uh, Stony Creek. Ah, it was the old man. He phoned Willie, too. Oh. What did he want? Money. That's all he ever wants. If he calls again, uh, say I've gone to uh, South America for five years. My treasure. The loving brother, the loving son, and the loving husband. What woman could ask for more? You tell me. End of story. Yeah, Bob. Think so. Now, you drink that up and we'll go down to the bar. No, no, I, I just couldn't face him. Nobody knows you were bluffing. Yeah, Charlie does. But he won't tell us all, he promised. No, I, I'll just stay here. Now, listen to me, Pop. Maybe Willie really did have an important conference and maybe Wally was out. You could be jumping to conclusions. No, no, they, they just ain't interested in me. You haven't been exactly a dutiful father yourself, have you? What is it? Fifteen years since you saw them? Yeah, about that. So you phoned them up out of the blue, expecting to drop everything and rush down here with 3,000 pounds? Yeah, don't lecture me. Pop, I'm going to sit here in the morning. Why don't you come with me? Give the boys a chance. See them face to face. Make them an intelligent business proposition. No, I, I couldn't. But if an assayer agrees with you that this mine is as good as you say it is, then the boys will come round. I'll give them a chance. Come to Sydney with me. No, I, I'm sorry, Simon. Hey, you're a nice young fella. Yeah, and you're a stubborn old coot. Oh, it just ain't, ain't stubbornness what's keeping me from going to Sydney. It's just that I ain't got the fear. Is that all? Yeah. Where's he getting the money for this trip? Well, he uh, had £200 saved up, tucked underneath the mattress. Here he comes! Well, how do I look? Now you look a real... It's terrific, Pop. Great. 
Very, very. A regular city flicker. <laughs> hey, Linda, if you think this time will be all right down there with. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, look, how do you think I'll fit in down there, you know, down in Sydney? All right, do you think? Pop, you'd fit in anywhere. <laughs> Have a good trip, huh? You'll knock them cold, Pop. Uh, if you don't fall out the aeroplane. <laughs> you better be careful, Mr. Grove. When I get back to Stony Creek, I'll give you another lesson in manners. <laughs> Ready, Pop? Hey, Linda. Well, Pop, don't forget to send us a card. Good luck, Pop. Yes, everything you want. Here now, one of the Sydney students, too, OK? Hello, Pop. When Mr. Lardy Da Templar comes back to Stony Creek, I'm gonna get him. Yes, sir, I'm gonna get him real good. Mind if I make a suggestion, Pop? Eh, yeah, not at all. Well, don't you think it'd be a good idea, instead of just dropping in, to telephone Wally first? Oh, well, I want to give you a big surprise. <laughs> no, not much good on the telephone. Yeah, but he uh, could be out to dinner or something. Well, I'll wait for him. Now, don't you worry, Simon. I know what I'm doing, son. You got the address? Yep. Longworth Avenue. It sounds pretty richy, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> you look a right dog. Yes. Yeah. I'll see you in the morning, eh? Yes, right, Simon. Good luck, Pop. Yeah. First of all, you've got to attract their attention. And I'm Martini, Mrs. Harrison. Ah, oh, well, if you insist. Hank. And for you, Jane. Molly, dear. Yeah. We're dry. Oh, sorry, darling. Excuse me, Mr. Harrison. Yeah, sure. Well. Is that the room? I think it's over the room. No, it's all right, love. I know these people. Hello, everybody. Oh, no. Oh, just in time for a party. I didn't know you was having a... Hello, Wally. How are you, son? How are you going, boy? Hello, Dad. My word, you're all togged up, too, eh? Edna, how are you? Hey, you're not putting on much weight, are you, love? You're still as skinny as a drover's bitch, ain't you? <laughs> hey, I'm Pop Kinsel, Wally's pa. <laughs> How are you, mate? Hey, what's your name? Harrison. Yeah, pleased to meet you. Well, yeah, we're just in time for a drink, eh, hey, Wal? I, uh, I think we'll go in. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Harrison? Mr. Carter? Hey, where are they off to, Wally? Well, you see, Dad, we're having a little dinner party. Oh, hey, enjoy your grub, folks. I'd ask you to join us, Dad, but it's, uh, it's business. Well, that's all right, son. Sorry to bust in on you. As a matter of fact, I need a few quid. Oh, here. No, not that kind of money, son. I need 3,000. What? 3,000. You really get the beer, son. Ah. Uh, yes, Wally, I got a silver mine that's a sure thing. The lease expires next Monday noon. 3,000 pounds? Are you crazy? I don't want you to give it to me, son. It's just a loan. I'll pay you back. Yeah. I've got the richest saw you ever seen, Wally. Look, I got somebody in my pocket here. Have a look at this. Don't bother. Look, Dad, this is a business dinner. Mr. Harrison's a very important man, and I... And I'm not. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Now, what way did you mean it, son? Simply that this isn't the time or the place for you and me to be discussing family matters. Oh, you stinking little ungrateful cur. Don't talk to me like that. I'll talk to you any way I like. Why, well, you built this fancy house on the money I gave you, son. And started your flaming business and all the rest of it. Like them diamonds that cow wife of yours is wearing. <laughs> Get out. You bet I'm getting out. I've been in barns that smell better than this dump, you rotten, stinking little up-jump snob. <laughs> yeah, see, Wally's cap and it's all tied up with a big deal he's gonna make. Yeah. Hey, he wanted to sell some stock and give me the money, but I wouldn't let him do that. No. So this morning you're going to try Willie? Yeah, sure. I have an appointment at the Assayers' office at 10. I'll pick you up at Willie's office at 10.30, OK? Oh, that'll be fine. Hey, don't you worry, Simon. Willie will come through. You know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I kind of think Willie's my favourite now. I just can't do it, Dad. I'm sorry. Now, you'll have to excuse me. I've got a golf date. 
Miss Kate of Harrison calls. Leave a message with the steward. Pit Water Golf Club, will you? Yes, please. Couldn't you think it over, son? Look, Pop, for the last time, the answer is no. N-O, no. See, Mr. Templer, very interesting. Then you think the strike has possibilities? Well, I didn't say that exactly. I said this sample of, of ore would assay around 100 ounces to the ton. Of course, one sample doesn't make a mine. Well, do you think you could come out to Stony Creek and look the mine over yourself? Ah, yes, of course. Over 20 pounds a day, uh, plus expenses. That's OK. Just might be an isolated outcrop of high yield ore. And if it isn't? Then, Mr. Templer, you... Uh, you have a mine. May I get you a cup of coffee, Mr. Kinsel? Hello there, Pop. How did they go? No dice? Oh, well, never mind. Never mind? Of course I flame a well mine. You sweat your guts out to make money to educate them. You, you put up with their tantrums, they're fighting. You, you, you sweat to make more, to give them more, and all they do is kick in the belly. I wanted my sons to be proud of me. Why? They're nothing to be proud of. Pop, I said never mind, because I'm going to put up the 3,000 pounds myself. What? I said I'll put up the money. I've uh, spoken to the assayer. He says the ore will crush at 100 ounces to the ton. hundred ounces to the ton. That's what he said. Give me the first available flight to Glen Curry and lay on a car to take me to Stony Creek. Yes, sir. He struck it rich twice before, you know. Maybe he's done it again. Yeah, looks good. Very good. Hey, you are. See, what I tell you? Why is your flaming bunny bringing him all the way out here? I can smell our yield. I don't need no flaming assay to tell me good ball. Why don't you calm down, Pop? Still, Mr. Kenzel, as I am here, and Mr. Templer's paying me. You won't mind if I have a look? Maybe uh, probe a little further, a little deeper. No, you go right ahead. Hey, did you do your own digging, mate? Well, of course. I'll give you a hand. Hey, it's only time for lunch, isn't it? Lunch or beer? Ah. Go on, you old soak. Good day. Good day. This all there is to Stony Creek. About? You want a drink? Yeah, drink and some information. Well, let's get the drink first. Whiskey. Big one. And what sort of information? I'm looking for Mr. Joseph Kinsel. Uh, him. He's out of his mind. Hmm? Where's that? Uh, a few miles. I'll telegraph track. Are you a reporter or something? We heard rumors Pop struck it rich. Oh, uh, not a reporter. I'm his son. Where's the mine? Well, uh, they're a bit tricky if you don't know the country. You get lost out there real easy. Look, I'm not doing nothing. I'll, I'll show you the way, eh? Huh? Yeah. He told all of us you was leaving him the cash for the mine lease, right? No, uh, not me. Some fella called Templar did that. <laughs> you don't like him, huh? He's a crook. A smooth, fast-talking crook. You know, I reckon he's trying to con your old man out of half of his mind. Well, we'll have to do something about that, won't we? Yeah. And I hope you do it good. Real good. That's good of you to show me the way, Grove. I appreciate it. No trouble. Templar. Thanks. Stone the crows. Look who's here. Hello, Dad. Thought I'd come out and see you. Yeah, did you now? Why? Well, I uh, thought I'd apologize for being so rude to you in Sydney. Well, that's real thoughtful of you. Simon, I'd like you to meet my thoughtful son, Willie. Hello. How are you going? Well, and look who he's brought with him. Mr. Faithful Grove. The stranger's best friend. The best friend of all the snakes in the bush. Yes, you must be out here as a good neighbor. Open my son. I only showed him the way out here. Yeah. Well, now, Jerry, what do you want? Well, I thought, Pop, if you still needed some help. 
Yeah, so you want to be a partner in my mine, eh? Sure, Dad, any time. Well, I'm afraid your father already has a partner. Me. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's go and get that beer we spoke about, eh, partner? Yes. Before you was born, I wouldn't take the price of a beer off you if you crawl on your flaming hands and... Ha <laughs> ha, that's it. Yeah. Off you, Sean. Yes, here we are, Jimmy. What a snake you turned out to be. How did you know I was here? Miss Kane told Harrison, you skunk. <laughs> Hello, Dad. Well, the smell of silver travels fast, don't it? Dad, I, uh, I'm sorry I was rude the other night. Well, I'm sorry I can't ask you to stay, Wally. I'm giving a little business dinner. That's it. Yes, yes. Watch it up the business party. You two silly. Dad, listen. We want to be your partner, Dad. I get a partner. Simon Tetler. You don't even know him. After all, uh, we are own flesh and blood. You know something, Wally? I'd rather bred ticks on a sheep's belly than you two. Couple of maggots. That's all you are. He's as full as a boot. Yeah, maybe I am full. But I'll tell you this. You're not getting one part of my mind. Not one flaming, stinking, stony part of it. So you can get back south and crawl in under those stones you just crawled out of. He's pretty drunk. He means it. Looks like a wasted trip, huh? You just have to wait for him to kick off. He's no chicken. He'll have to go sometime. Remember that will? Didn't he file a will back with Stephen and Hardy in Sydney? Yeah, a long time ago. He left everything to us, split 50-50. Means 25-25. Eh? Temple will get the other half of this mine. That only leaves half for us. 25% each. I've forgotten that. Somebody ought to do something about Templar. Good idea. It's rough country up here. Your man went for a walk one night. I never saw him again. You suggesting? Of course he is. Why not? I'll have to shove my fizz down Templar's throat and pull his guts out. That makes three of us. Supposing he met with an accident. Yeah. Supposing he did. After we're back in Sydney. Now, when are you leaving? In the morning. Okay, if we can come to a price. How much? Five hundred. Three hundred. Five, take it or leave it. Two fifty each. Okay. Hey, what are you doing here? On my way back to Stony Creek, I thought I'd stop by and see how you're going. And why? Just interested. I'm a mind of myself. Oh, good on you. Finish the assay? Yeah. Any good? Well, since you're a mind of yourself, you'll know that information belongs to the man who pays for it.
just a man I wanted to see. How's it going? Oh, not 100%, but near enough. Oh, how does it look? Well, it's like this. It looks good, almost too good. I never saw a vein of silver quite like it. So I thought I'd dynamite further in, say, three charges, just have a look. Well, and? It's finished. What do you mean? Is the vein finished? After about eight feet. Big wall of basalt. Basalt? Yeah, blew three more charges. Basalt, two more, basalt. Then I went out and drilled in from the side. Basalt. All the silver on that mine's been taken out. Yeah, but how? It's just an outcropping. Isolated outcropping, that's all. Sorry. It's hardly your fault, is it? Well, no. Well, I reckon I'll take a shower. Hold on a second. Don't say anything about this to Pop, will you? I'd like to break it to him gently. Okay. Sure. I'll type out my report tonight and be in the morning. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hey, get in, mate. Come on and buy your beer. Oh, later, thanks, Mr. Kensel. I need a shower more than anything. <laughs> How's the assay going? Well, as I said to Mr. Grove with the mine, the assay belongs to the man who pays for it. In this case, Mr. Templer. Hey, did you say Grove? Yes. Out of my mine? He said he was just passing by on his way back to town. Hey, why'd he stop? Well, I suppose just, uh, curiosity. I wonder. Hey, but he's a crook. He's poisoned. You know, Pop, I think it's about time I gave Mr. Grove that second lesson in manners I promised him. Oh. Hey, this I gotta <laughs> see. <laughs> oh, what are you waiting for? All right, you leave it to me. Give it to him, good. You bet. Too bad you didn't finish him off, he's still breathing. Hey, what was he doing? Uh, some of the shorings we'll have a look. Yes, all right, I'll work around here. You boys come up here. Okay, fine. Bundaberg. I'd never make it. I'd be crazy digger. Take about another 20 years. Linda, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave you my silver mine. You know what I want, don't you? That hospital. Right here in Stony Creek. Behind that big old cooler bar tree. That 
That's what I want to leave. A monument to a real good nurse called Linda. And an old soap called me. And Simon. Yes, Papa. You'll see it's done right, won't you? <laughs> Promise me that, that hospital will have everything Linda wants. Sure, Papa, I promise. Oh, get Charlie up here, will you? He, he's, he's just as a piece, Charlie. I've got to make a new will. No, Pop, you're not strong enough. Wait till tomorrow. No, I'm going to be real busy tomorrow. Getting the heaven organized. Oh, Simon, a, a bottle of scotch. Uh, and a couple of straws under to suck it up with. Okay. No. What difference can it make? Uh, you know, I, I always figured uh, I'd go out dead drunk. I reckon we should all stand up, gentlemen, and drink to Pop's memories. Pop. 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 I believe that Pop's gone. Yes, I know. Mine worthless. Hardly seems possible. I'm afraid it's true. There was no point in telling him. Well, we've done without a hospital in Stony Creek for a long time. We'll get along. Linda, I promised Pop you would have a hospital. I intend to keep that promise. But how? What do you mean? Right now, those two sons of his are drooling over a worthless mind, but they don't know it's worthless. I'm going to capitalize on that. How? Boy, a little scheme cooking. Tomorrow you and I are going to fly to Sydney. I missed your father two or three times when he was ill. I was very fond of him. Oh, we all were. He used to talk to me a great deal about you and Willie, but you were always his favorite. Well, I understood him better. Oh, yeah, he knew that. How about getting to the point? Sorry. I understand that your father made a will many years ago, which he filed with his Sydney solicitors. That's right. Stevens and Hardy. It leaves everything to us equally. Mr. Kinzel, your father made another will the night he died. What? Oh, yeah, I witnessed it. What was in it? Oh, look, I just witnessed your dad's signature. I didn't read it. But I do know that there was only one beneficiary. One? What are you getting at? Mrs. Kinzel... I don't trust this Simon Templer. I think he tricked Pop into giving him a partnership in the mine. I'm sure of it. Well, that's why I want to see justice done. Now, right at this moment, Simon Templer is in your brother's office, selling him the will your father made the night he died. Selling it? And will he's pay? Well, that's what I understand. Well, it's obvious why. Of course. If Willie's paying good money for it, then you will leaves everything to me. What a lousy crook. Dirty double crossing swine. How do we know she's telling the truth? Mrs. Kinsel, I only want to see justice done. If you don't believe me, why don't you phone Willie's office and ask for Mr. Templer? He's there now. You do it. Miss Kane might recognize my voice. Okay. William Kinsel Company, good morning. I believe that a Mr. Simon Templer's with Mr. Kinsel. Could I speak to him, please? Mr. Templer is in conference with Mr. Kinsel at the moment. May I take a message? He's there. I told you. You mean that little bush nurse is over at Wally's right now? Making a deal. And if Wally's paying her for it, I must be the beneficiary. Well, that 
Might be the logical conclusion. Can you get hold of it? I can guarantee it. At a price. How much? Ten thousand pounds. I'll write you a check right now. You can have the will when that check clears the bank. It'll clear the bank. What do you think I am? Well, I think you are. It's besides the point. You come by the Westbury Hotel at four o'clock. You can have the will. Thank you. Come in. Where's that will, you crook? I beg your pardon? My father's will that leaves everything to me, I want it. I know you're trying to sell it to that dirty, swindling brother of mine, and if I don't get it, I'll go to the police. Only there's no need to shout. Oh, I'll have you arrested. I'll put you in How jail. What proof do you have of the existence of this will? I know it exists, and I know you've got it. You're a thief and a swindler. You don't watch your manners. I'm going to throw you out. All right. All right. I won't go to the police. I'll buy it. How much do you want? Well, I'm afraid the will is not for sale. It has to be. No, you see, your brother's cheque is already in my bank. I'm just waiting for it to clear before handing the will over to him. Nonsense! Well, he hasn't got a cheque. Well, that's what I just said. I'll give you whatever he gave you, and you won't have to return his money. Oh, but that would be dishonest. So who'll know? Well, he wouldn't dare go into court and say what he gave it to you for. Well, that's true. Wally, I, uh... I like you, I really do. No, I, I, I couldn't break my word to Willie. Well, uh... Not less than 20,000 pounds. He only paid 10. Yes, yes. You're a thief, a crook. Granted, granted, but so are you. Now, Wally, I suggest you run around to your bank and draw out a substantial amount in cash. You see, Will is going to be here in less than an hour, and well, if you're going to make an offer, it should be on acceptable terms. Mind the stairs. <laughs> Yeah. Who couldn't? Right, you better go and get packed. Go down to the agency, pick up the tickets, and meet me out at the airport at 4.45 sharp. Right. I have a feeling we're going to have to leave Sydney rather abruptly. Oh, to say the least. Uh, Willie, welcome back. My check been cleared? Yes, I just called the bank. Good. Well, you can hand over the will, then. Well, I'm, uh... A rather difficult situation has arisen. What do you mean, difficult? You got the money? What are you trying to do? Well, your brother has been around to see me. Wally, how did he hear of this? Oh, I've no idea. I certainly didn't tell him. Must be Wally now. I, I made it as fast as I could. You crook! You dirty double. Now, crook. boys, temper. Whatever he gave you, I'll give you twice as much. I'll give you three times. Four times. I'll give you 25% of everything I get out of the estate. I'll give you 30%. 40! Now, hold it, fellas. 50%? How? Do you think you should have a look at the will first? Come on. I, Joseph Kinzel, being of sound mind, do hereby... Come on, come on, come on, get on with it. My entire estate to the Joseph Kinzel Memorial Hospital. To be erected at Stony Creek. Right, when I give you the wink, you go to work. Understood? Drink up. Everybody, I've uh, got an announcement to make. At long last, Joe Casey here has got up the courage to ask Linda Henderson an important question. What more do I have to say? They're going to get married. Oh! Just a moment, friends, there's more. That's him. Arrest him. The two finest, most public-spirited men in the whole of Australia have just walked in. Well, now, let me explain. The fact is, Pop Silvermine is worthless. I have a surveyor's report right here in my pocket to prove it. But his two fine, generous, socially conscious sons have done a truly wonderful and generous thing. What do you want me to do? Shut up. 
Knowing the great need for a hospital here in Stony Creek, and knowing that such a hospital was their late father's dearest wish, these two fine sons of his have, in Pop's name, donated the sum of 30,000 pounds. <laughs> Willie, Wally, you realize tomorrow morning your name's going to be headline news right throughout the whole of Australia. But nowhere in the country will you get a more sincere or heartfelt tribute than we here offer you tonight. He can't do this. He's done it. So smile. I can't. Well, try. We're famous now, the loving brothers. What do you say, friends? Three rousing cheers for Willie and Wally Kinsel. Hey, <laughs>